bleeding brakes. Let's see. Let's say you replace the left front caliper, which would be this one, left front. Whatever you do, do not <laughs> let the system run dry while you're replacing the caliper. Because that just makes things even more longer to do because of the ABS system. What you want to do is you give a, a line restrictor that squeezes the line, sort of like needle nose vice grips. But needle nose vice grips, because most people don't know or understand them, they can pinch them and make them too tight and cause them to crack or split. So you need the, the, the pinchers that just are like a, like a little clamp, clamp them on there. You can even use a small uh, C-clamp. What you wanna do is just restrict it enough so it doesn't sit there and drain your whole brake fluid system. So, you took the old caliper off and you put the new caliper back on. Make sure when you can put your new caliper on, it, there's a, there's a washer on underneath the bolt and there's a washer between the line and the caliper. Now that you got that done, you go to your bleeder and you open your bleeder up. Just let it sit there for a while. And you go underneath your hood, you open your master cylinder up and you fill it up. And you leave the cap off and let it sit. And then let it gravity bleed. Eventually the fluid will come out and you'll see it drip, 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 or even a steady stream. When that happens, tighten your bleeder. And then you want to go underneath the hood, fill it back up, put your cap on. Go underneath, inside the vehicle, and hit your brake pedal a couple times to push the pistons out and then I'll actually circulate the motion inside there so the air bubbles will all eventually work their way up to the tap where the bleeder is. And then you'll take a hammer and you'll tap on the caliper. That kind of vibrates it to get all the little air bubbles up to the bleeder. And then you want to take your cap off again. Double check your fluid level. Leave the cap off. Go down to your bleeder and open it up. And you'll see it coming out, dripping out. And as it's dripping out, you want to tap on lightly with your hammer again and watch it. See, and then watch, see if any more bubbles come out. No more bubbles come out. No spitting, no bubbles. Just tighten your bleeder up. It's good. Top your master cylinder fluid off, put your cap on. Clean the caliper off. Go back inside, start the vehicle up, push the brake pedal a couple times, shut the vehicle off, come back and look, and look for uh, wetness around your hose, wetness from around your bleeder, and possibly, you know, around your pistons too, if that's bad, who knows. But if it's all dry, then you're good. If you replaced a right rear, which is the farthest one, you will need to open the bleeder up, go underneath the hood, take the cap off, and let it sit for a little bit to see if it's gonna gravity bleed back there. If it doesn't gravity bleed back there, then go underneath your hood, put your cap back on, and then go inside the cab, and start the engine, and push the pedal to the floor slowly a couple of times, and then go back and look at the right rear, see if there's any fluid on the floor or coming out. If there's fluid coming out, shut the vehicle off, go back underneath the hood, top off your master cylinder, and then go back and see how it's dripping in the back. If it's dripping pretty good, close the, close the bleeder, go back underneath the hood, um, go back underneath the hood, put the cap back on, go inside the car, start it, push the pedal a couple of times to the floor, make sure it's got a decent pedal, start to shut the vehicle off, go underneath the hood, take the cap off, go back to the wheel, take the bleeder off, and as you have the bleeder off, tap on the caliper and see if any air comes out. 
You don't see no more air coming out, and then you're good. Let's say you replaced uh, the left rear on a vehicle. And do it the same way. Some of these vehicles have four brake lines, one to each tire, and some on the rear of a truck will have one line teed off going to the right and rear, right and left. So if that's the case, then you wanna bleed the farthest one first, and you wanna bleed the left driver's side second. Because possibility sometimes the fluid will suck from the driver's side to the passenger side. It's just a matter of letting things flow. If you replace all the brake lines, I always leave the lines open and I'll put the fluid in there. I'll see if anything gravity bleeds. If it doesn't gravity bleed, I'll put the cap back on the master and I'll push the pedal to the floor a bunch of times. And then when I see it, the fluid coming out of one spot, I'll close that bleeder and I'll go back and I'll pump it again to see if it comes out somewhere else on another bleeder and I'll close that one. And meanwhile, I'll keep checking my fluid level, make sure I'm not gonna run out. Cause if I run out of fluid, I have to start all over again. The reason why I always put the cap on when I'm pumping the pedal, because sometimes when you pump the pedal, it causes a geyser to come out of the uh, master cylinder reservoir. That's because it's closing the valve and it shoots up. Um, but then when I do take the cap off, that's for gravity bleeding. Cap on for when you're using the brake pedal. I hope this helps.